I have had a number of engagements with Kilsha in relation to their forestry strategy. Um, and in respect of their pronouncements in relation to partnerships, I actually put it to them. Um, as to what that might look like. And they stated categorically that in the first instance and primarily, it would be about engagements with local communities and farmers and existing foresters. But that wasn't their first instance. So I would be interested if the ministers are saying that they had a different view. In other words, that they were aware that it was actually precisely this type of Gresham House deal that would be pursued. Um, in the minister's statement that was circulated but, the, um, but subsequently wasn't read out, um, he acknowledges disquiet about this um, deal, but says, I believe it is unwarranted. Now, that line was taken out of the speech you actually del delivered. Um, am I to take it then that you don't stand over the suggestion that the disquiet is unwarranted? Uh, my opening statement is the one I delivered here, Deputy Carthy, um, uh, and that's the one I put together, and that's my opening statement. Um, listen, I understand the, um, the, the public uh, uh, position in this, and the public have made their, their, their view very clear, and, I, and I've listened to the public, and I've also looked and engaged and met with Minister Hackett with Kielsha on this, and say the prefer, our preferred option here and the way we will be engaging with Kielsha is about public la the way to engage with the state, the way to engage with farmers. But listen, in terms of the presentation, um, that uh, Keynes would have given, to, would have, they would have made it clear that they were looking at exploring private investment, as they did to you. Um, and, uh, and as I say, this is three percent okay, of their so, overall of their overall ambition. Okay, so take it that it's not your preferred <coughs> option. I take it then, and to give you the benefit of the doubt, that you didn't envisage this type of a deal. This with a Gresham House with an organisation such as this, a British investment fund. Um, had you known um, before the deal was signed off on. Would you have used your authority as a minister to stop it? Well, I think, and listen, we're all in the same position in this, Deputy Carthy. So yes or no you, answer? Well, listen, no, let sir. me answer the question. Uh, no, uh, you can ask them. Um, in that Kielsha made it uh, clear to you, um, as well as to myself, Minister Hackett, and anyone else they engaged with, that there was a number of ways which they were going to try and step out their 100,000 uh, forestation target. One of those was going to be engaging with uh, private investment, okay. So they then proceeded with that, engaging with ISAF, the experts. Um, I, they've now done that deal. I think I've made it very clear what my view is in terms of how we step forward um, uh, and in terms of actually well, working, well, come to working, that. working come with to the that. state. Well, Chair, you're running a very tight clock, so I'm not where, allowing where the Minister the state to, to run down farmers. the clock. Because here's um, the but, issue, but, 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 here's the but, issue Minister. On this particular deal. You did know before the 16th of December. And the reason why I know you knew is because... I had heard of this potential deal with Gresham House, and I brought it to your attention. I raised it in the doll, and not only did I do it, Deputy Fitzmaurice did it, and Deputy Boyd Barrett did it. They told you in November. Also, we had an engagement with Kielce the week before that, and we each um, highlighted that this was the deal well, that was in, 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 well, that the deal that was it was in, 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 envisaged. Um, you. I take it, and you can clarify um, me if I'm wrong, you signed a letter of expectation to Kielce in June 2022. And what was the purpose of that letter of expectation? Why did you feel that, that is, you needed to sign that, it? That is a standard um, uh, uh, outline from the Minister um, uh, to the semi-state organisation in relation to uh, the work that they'll be doing. And it was very much the, uh, enabling them and, and, and to continue with the work and to enable them to do the work in line with their strategic vision, which they have outlined to yourself as well as myself and to others. So this, it was per, it per, um, specifically to allow them to pursue this well, as Kielce would have outlined to you, Deputy Carthy, when they met you, uh, the, the different ways in which they were going to try to do afforestation. One of them, one of them being, one of them being uh, availing of some private finance. Um, the letter of author or of, of um, expectation for myself as minister was to enable Kielce to step out um, their their work in relation to getting towards 100 hectares of of, uh, of afforestation and to be able to explore the options which would which would facilitate them in doing that. So um, I take that that this was specifically to allow them to pursue that course. Then, um, in relation to no, not the... this particular deal, no, no, it was it was the principle uh, principle okay. deputy Carthy of. Okay. Uh, of, of okay. enabling some private, you've just, private, you, private you've, investment. You, you've just um, informed us that Kilcher are actually seeking to invest €10 million Euro of their own funds in this um, joint venture. 
Why would Kilja not just invest that €10 million Euro on their own part? Why would they need to <coughs> use this, what is public money, um, to invest it in, along, in the joint venture? One of the, because one of the reasons Kielce stopped doing afforestation in, in um, 2004 was because up until that point in time they were able to avail of uh, forestry premiums um, in the same way that, that anyone else could. Um, but after 2004, uh, and, or as a result of a state aid decision, um, they were no longer able to do that. Um, that then meant that the financials for them uh, to be able to do afforestation themselves uh, didn't stack up in the way it had before. Also at that particular time in 2004, there was very significant afforestation happening by farmers and privately, uh, so there wasn't the same need uh, for Kielce to be involved at that time. As you know, in recent times, forestation has been very low, uh, and figures of uh, plant hectares going under has been very low, and we need to step that up. So Kielce are looking to get back into that space. In so order to so do you, that, what you're suggesting is in that order to the 10 do million that, euro, they have been looking at I options know, as to how they can actually do You're suggesting that. that the 10 million euro invested in this joint venture um, won't then be subject to the state aid rules um, as opposed to where they to um, invest in. So, invest so what, what Kielce are looking at is, I mean, how they can be involved, how they can do plantation, how they can be enabled to do that in okay, a way that is because, compliant with state aid rules. Okay. Yeah. So, so and, and, and state aid rules have been cited not as our reason, uh, in fact, as the primary reason. That's what Kielce told us when they were before us in December. That's what um, Pippa Hackett's party leader has said, that this is actually down to um, EU um, state aid rules. So let me ask you this. Um, what efforts, if you can be as concise as possible, have, have you and your department made in respect of ensuring that state aid rules are changed so as to allow Kielce to actually invest directly without the need for a joint venture? Um, well, new state aid, aid rules are just in place now since the 1st of January, so it gives, us the, those, yeah. <laughs> gives us the opportunity now to, to engage on that issue. I, I suppose our priority at the moment is to get the forestry programme up and running, and we're engaging closely um, with the Commission on that. There's a lot of um, work even prior to this, uh, at the end of last year, it initiated, and we're engaging closely with the Commission now to get our forestry programme up but and running. But the state aid rules are in place. They, they are in pla they, the rules are in place since so 1st of January. I, so what I'm asking is, in advance of that, what efforts did you make to ensure that those state aid rules would actually allow Kulcha to invest directly as opposed to the need for these type of joint ventures? Well, the state aid rules are... are, are, are we have to adhere to the state aid rules. They're from the European Commission, so we didn't know what those... We, it wasn't available for us to apply okay. for until the 1st of January. <coughs> That's yeah. something we can certainly look into now. No, well, actually, because the state aid rules have been... Um, under review for some time. In fact, the Commission carried out a review of the state aid instruments for agriculture, forestry and rural areas. And your department in 2021 actually made a submission to that, actually got involved itself in the consultation process. And the European Commission very helpfully actually published all of the submissions they received from each government department. And I have the one okay. from Ireland here. There isn't a single reference to Kielce and the fact that state aid rules um, actually precluded our public forestry body, publicly owned forestry body, from actually enga engaging. So my question is, is there anything in writing to suggest that your department has actually sought proactively to change these state aid rules? So, well, well, listen, I mean, it, it is the reality that since 2004, Kielce haven't been able to avail of, of premiums. That, that has that, been the yes. reality. OK, so and as I say, uh, Kielce have been looking at the 100,000 hectares of forestation. They've been looking to uh, en en enable mechanisms to do that. There's, th there's three different options. Public land is one of those no, options. No, I'm asking There's, a specific no, let me, question. No, let me, th public land is one of them. Also then the create, creation of nature forests and also uh, the, one of the options which they're exploring in relation to partnering with for some private investment. Um, so listen, while we, in terms of our meeting with, and obviously as I say, um, Kielce were uh, stepping out um, what they'd announced that they would and how they could get to that stage. But we have been meeting and met with them last week. Um, it is our clear uh, intention to work to try and have the state more clearly work with them. In order to enable that, we're now going to be considering all of the uh, obstacles that may be there, uh, if any, 
uh, to being able to, uh, to, to being able to enable us to work more closely with them. We know the challenge is there in afforestation. We're going to explore, for example, the potential okay. relation to the state buying okay. more land, um, etc. You're, miss, you're, so, you're, you, so, you're either purposely and missing the also, point or you're simply we, missing, we also, missing the point. We also can look, know, we also can look at the, the opportunity the in relation to premiums um, and revisiting that issue in relation okay, to, so state, here's to, the, to here, state aid. Here's the, here's the issue. The state aid rules, the new state aid rules are in place since the 1st of January. The, my question to you was, what did you do proactively to try and ensure that the state aid rules would actually address what Kilcha said was the reason why they were engaging and needed a private element to their funding, which was the state aid rules. What I pointed you to is yeah. what is a written record that shows your department, when they had an opportunity to um, consult with the European Commission, didn't make reference to that issue. And I've asked you if there is any written record, perhaps you could provide it, but I'm just because I'm, I'm conscious of the time, to, um, the time frame. As I say, as it happens, the new state aid rules, on first reading, and we'll be looking for this clarification, but there actually are significant changes to the 2014 rules as they were and to my eye will actually allow for Kilcha to actually invest directly. Now considering that Kilcha have said that the reason they need these public-private partnership element is the state aid rules, the fact that the state aid rules came into place on the 1st of January that may allow them to invest directly what the hell were they doing signing a contract on the 16th of December, a mere fortnight before the new state aid rules came into place that has been universally rejected? Um, and I'll ask that question, and I'll ask my final question in case the, the chairman doesn't um, allow me to. Knowing what, we, <laughs> knowing what we now know, and knowing what you have said in respect of preferred options and all the rest, and the realities as to what these deals look like for communities and the resistance that the forestry sector and farmers um, have quite clearly let known, and the unanimity of this committee, and I think virtually everybody across both houses of the, the Oireachtas, will you now issue a new letter of expectation to Kilcha, instructing them not to engage further in these type of deals? That way, at least we can put the line whether or not we can argue in terms of the Gresham House deal. I believe fundamentally you can stop it, but in respect of future ones, you absolutely can beyond doubt by issuing a letter of expectation. So my question is, will you do that? Okay, a brief answer now, Minister. Yeah. So, so, so listen, um, uh, I think I've been very clear, Deputy Carthy, that uh, the way we want to go forward is working with Keynes in terms of working with them with the state. Um, I've asked them to uh, reflect on how we can do that in a way that will work really well. We will then work to look at the state aid uh, to try and make that work and see how that would work and fit into that and, make, uh, and address all of that. So that's the way we'll go forward. I've, whenever the, 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 uh, the updated letter is, or if there's going to be an updated letter, it will reflect that. In the meantime, I'll be working very closely with them. Kielsch are very clear from the meeting they've had with us how we want to proceed. It's backing farmers. It's working with farmers. It's working okay, with uh, the state uh, very much. But let's be fair to Kielsch as well. Let's be fair to Kielsch. They were stepping out... Um, uh, an approach which they had very clearly communicated to ourselves and indeed to all of you, which is very much in the public domain and okay. stepping that out in the way that is the legal legal way for them to do it. But there's no okay. doubt, um, and, and uh, uh, there's no doubt that uh, the way we want to go forward is uh, okay. the way we have la laid out Answer. here today. Just in relation to the new forestry programme that was announced in November, were Kulcha in touch with your department in respect of the time frame of that, when that announcement would be made, when those details would be made public? Uh, the sector were in touch in relation to it. It was one of their asks that they, they were know, given it, it, sight of, of that because the forestry sector themselves, in terms of the foresters and the companies, wanted to have a, an indication of what, what, was in, what was coming ahead so they could engage with their farmers on the ground. That was a, an ask from the sector. I know that's yeah. a good but, answer, but it's not the answer to the question I asked. I said, were culture in touch with, in, 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 in discussions with the department in respect of when that um, announcement would be made and the details of it made public? I mean, I think it was always clear when, I mean, NMD would have known when, I mean, that it was to start from January and that we were, we were answering questions in the Dáil and Senate all the time. It was public information. So, so the answer is no. There was no specific engagement with Kinch on this issue. I don't think NMD would have had... Uh, Column, you can see the suspicions people will have that it was so soon after that announcement that the final deal with Gresham House was signed off on, because the timing of the Gresham House deal doesn't make sense otherwise, because it was just a week before the new state aid rules would come into place. The state aid rules, which Kilcha have cited as the reason why 
the ca they needed this pri um, private entity so in the first place. They would place. have known the state aid rules were in January anyway, but yes. the pressure, the, the, the timing of the publication of the proposed programme was, was entirely, well, from my perspective and from my engagement, was due to the, the sector itself that the okay. forestry companies wanted to give some sort of okay. assurances no, to their farmers. As I say, I asked a specific question, and um, the answer is no, I take it. Um, in terms of the agreement that Keelcha have now with Gresham House, um, which is for a €200 million Euro investment, €25 million of which um, is coming from um, the, um, the, the, uh, our, own, our own body, and then Keelcha apparently, and I'll come to this in a minute, are putting forward €10 million. What happens if Gresham House don't manage to get €200 million in investors? Can Keelcha pull out of the deal? Question for Gresham House, I guess. Or for, <laughs> or for Gresham. Yeah. Have you not asked them that question? I don't know the answer to that question. Um, my, my, my understand. I mean, I, I don't. You've said you're, I, you you don't. This isn't your favourite option. Isn't a good way to maybe stop it. Tell investors we don't want you investing in this um, in this fund just in case there's any uh, other state-owned bodies, banks, perhaps that we have shareholders that might be considering. Say no, stay away from it. This has universal opposition from environmentalists, from farmers, from local communities, from the timber sector. This is actually going to damage our prospects of reaching our afforestation um, um, targets. So therefore, here's a message from the Irish government. Please don't invest in this because it's not our favourite option. Look, I mean, Kilsha and ISAF have entered into contractual obligations in regard to that, which, as I say, is 1% of our total ambition in 2050. We have uh, a lot of work to be getting on with in terms of working with Kilsha and working with farmers to support them uh, in afforestation and our approach now in relation to Kielce is seeing how we can work them, support them. But the question the I've asked you. is whether or not Kielce have secured an obligation or an opt-out clause if Gresham House don't actually the, uh, pony the, up in terms the, of the full that's, level of that's a investment. I mean, that's a, that's a contractual deal between Kielce and ISAF. And, but you're uh, the shareholder of Kielce. Uh, but there's a contractual deal between, that Kielce have entered into with um, ISAF and Gresham House. So listen, I, I'm, not aware, I'm, not, okay, I don't, I'm not aware of the finer detail of all of the contracts. Okay, so let me ask this then. In terms of one of the big issues, one of the reasons every all of the engagements, if you met with CIFA, they would tell you, along with lots of other farm organisations, you mentioned met with the um, IFA, and um, the chair would be the first to tell you. The thing that has caused more consternation has been the failure of the department in respect of ash dieback to adequately compensate um, farmers for that. But my question isn't related to that. It is whether or not in this deal um, Gresham House have secured protections for the likes of invasive diseases or any other areas um, that perhaps farmers wouldn't be protected if they were to enter the, um, the forestry programme. Are you aware of any of those protections being provided by Kilja in terms of this deal? Any which protections, Deputy Carthy? Protections for the investors in respect of, for example, invasive diseases impacting on the forestry sure crop or on any other areas, on, on you know, natural disasters. Or generally speaking, when investment funds when investment funds enter into negotiations, they can be if they're dealing with people that aren't up to them. Um, very good at putting in clauses that ensure that they're protected from any potential loss as opposed to the people that they're in partnership with. Um, have you got assurances from Kielce that the state isn't going to be left on the hook for things like um, a, you know, a, 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 an ash dieback type um, incidents um, and that it will be the investors that will take the hit as would be the natural case of Listen, I, I don't. I don't have all the very all the finer detail uh, of the uh, agreement, Deputy Carthy. Um, it's my our focus, and when we met uh, with Kilcher last week, was to get an update in relation to where they're at with it, their contractual obligations, and in particular to focus on how we, as a government and as a state, can work with them uh, going forward in terms of supporting their afforestation objectives. Uh, I, I simply don't have the finer contractual details. So, in terms of the the one thing that most people find bizarre, just can't get their heads around, um, because this has been sold by Kielce in terms of expanding the forestry programme. Um, and as I mentioned last night in the debate, um, 3,500 of the 12,000 he um, hectares in terms of this initial deal is only going to be for new afforestation. The other 8,500 hectares is actually going to be existing forestry land. Who owns that land currently? And what benefit is there to the state? for Gresham House taking control of land that is already forested? 
I know Kielce's objective, and, and certainly in the way we will be supporting them uh, to do more afforestation, um, Kielce's objective was to manage forests in an effective way for the environment and also for the climate. Um, so in relation to, as you know, mature forestry, when somebody might have planted it 40 years ago and they come up now and it's harvested, they might not want to go, or maybe it's normally not the same person that would have planted it in the first place, it might be their son or daughter or niece or nephew that's there now is doing the harvesting. They might not want to go and do the planting again um, and uh, wait the 40 plus years or 30, 40 years um, and invest in that. And there is a bit of a, there, there is therefore often um, uh, a market in that space. Oh, Kielce, I, mean, Kielce, I, mean, I can understand why some of that land might become available, but yeah, I'm asking what no, is no, the, what's the benefit of the state? My understanding is where Kielce's objective there is to be able to manage that in a way that means that the public have access to it, that means it's done in a way 50% for nature, 50% for conifer, um, and it's done in a way that's at the highest standards from a sustainability point of view. This is Gresham House purchased land. So um, are you suggesting that the existing forestry well, that saying, Gresham House are purchasing will be 50 per cent? You're asking what rationale Kielce has um, in relation to um, doing a forestation going forward, and they've obviously... No, no, I do, I'm, I'm sorry then, I didn't make the question okay. clear. As part of this Gresham House deal, the vast bulk of the land that is going to be purchased is existing forestry land. The question I'm asking is, what is the benefit to the state in that? Well, again, if, it, if it's managed according to the Kielce protocols um, and if it's Kielce managed, then it'll be done to the highest of standards. So that's the, 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 and, and that's the way Kielce would look at it. So uh, do you intend to carry out an appraisal as to what that might mean for local forestry companies that might currently be um, taking care of that land and what the implications might be for them well, well, from well, a social and economic um, um, yeah. point of view, what that might mean for local economies. So what we plan to do, listen, I mean, this is 1% of the overall overall target. What we plan to do is work with Kielce to step out and look at how we can support them going forward. They've signed up to a contractual obligation, um, which will see uh, 4,000 of new afforestation, 8,000 of existing forest. Uh, they, they, they're committed to that with Irish Strategic Investment Fund um, and, and Gresham House. Uh, we're going to work with them to see how we can do um, a, a lot more going forward working so with the state. My final, my final point is, I have to say, um, I don't buy your lines that this isn't your favourite um, option. Um, my view is that um, th that public opposition has brought you to, to that point. Um, but you have a way of proving me wrong and proving any critics wrong um, by ensuring that this doesn't happen again. The Kielce don't in engage in this type of um, an investment programme. And there's two ways you can do that. The first is, you've mentioned here today, the Kielce are planning to invest €10 million Euro in this in investment fund. You're the shareholder. It has to be approved by government. Such an investment, you can stop it. You can say it to Kielce, if you have €10 million Euro to invest, you buy the land so that it remains entirely, 100%, in public ownership. And the second thing you can do is issue a letter of expectation, a new letter of expectation to Kielce, making it crystal clear that the primary shareholder in the company doesn't want uh, um, them to engage in these type of investment um, um, programmes and instead pursue a route that uh, state aid rules can be used in a way in which we can actually allow Kielce to do this, either on their own or in conjunction with local communities. So my question is, will you ensure that the €10 million Euro isn't invested in this programme, and will you issue a new letter of expectation, setting out clearly what you have told this committee to the board of Kielce? So first of all, in relation to the fund as it stands, ISAF uh, have invested €25 million, Euro, which would be national government funding um, at, uh, so far. Um, Kielce have made a request uh, uh, in relation to uh, investing 10 million. We have sent that now to New Era for their assessment. Um, you approve that? that? No, we haven't got. I wait now to get New Era to assess it and come back and give their advice. Okay, and only after that then can we can we assess it. Um, so, you can stop it. So, is not true well, in terms well, of the it'll, it'll be it'll be our decision then to decide what to okay. do. Okay. So we'll first of all get the advice for New Era. Um, then the consideration will be if it's a 200 million euro fund. Um, and uh, Kielce were investing, for example, €10 million Euro into it. Well, that would be €10 million extra of the €200 million fund, which would be nationally owned rather than owned by investors. So that's something we could reflect on. Uh, we'll reflect on whether we don't allow any of it. 
I would also reflect on whether we would maybe encourage them to invest more so that more of it, more of the two more. Away, for, uh, more of the two, so for example, if Kielce had more ownership of it, then it would mean there'd be less private ownership of it. Why would so, they have 5% so, of something would so not be better than 100% yeah, so, so of listen, something? So those are, and I listen, I'll take, I listen to your views and perspectives on that as well. You're, you, what you're advocating there is that Kielce wouldn't put in 10 million, and that would mean that there would be 10 million from private investors instead to replace that Kielce 10 million. That's what would be the What I'm suggesting is if you're, you're saying that a programme that Kielce have invested in, that, or Kielce have agreed, the deal is done, this is your um, position, you can't do anything about it, but it's not actually your preferred option. Why then, if it's not your preferred option, would you even, uh, even consider? Well, well, because we're going to do, we're going to support Kielce and we're going to look at supporting Kielce to do all the rest in terms of working with the state, okay, um, and working with farmers. That's what we're going to do, right? But then if you take what Kielce has already signed up to, which is... Uh, working with ISIF and, uh, and Gresham House for a 200 million fund, which they have the option of investing in. So if they invest in that, then that means that they're using up some of the space. It means the state will own more of it. Okay. If they also encourage if they don't, private investors no, no, to well, follow if they, and if, well, they're already signed up to do that it. That would be the real reason. Okay. So if they don't invest in it, then it'd be, instead it would mean it'd be more private investment. So your, your objective would, would mean that, that, that more of the 200 million euro would be would be private the investment. The objective is to scupper the deal. It should be your well, objective as well. That would be the, in terms of the letter of expectation. That would be, that, that that would be what you, you, you would be proposing there in okay, terms I'm of... proposing to scupper the deal. The letter of expectation, okay. are you going to issue that? So we regularly issue letters of expectation. Um, we'll do that again uh, whenever it becomes... Respect of what I'm after outside. In, in the meantime, what we're doing, even more so than that, Deputy Carthy, we're working very closely with Kielce to see how we can support them, exploring, exploring how we can work together. Uh, and exploring how we can ensure... You are that. pursuing options that aren't your preferred option. We're, so we're, do you need to set them straight? And the way you do that is through a you, letter of you, expectation. You, you obviously haven't been listening to what I said. We I'm met them last there. week, we'll be working closely with them, and we're exploring with Kielce now the options as to how we as a state can support them and also how they can work with farmers. Okay. And if you have any ideas that might be useful... Um, After giving you two okay. there. Any ideas that okay. might be After useful... After giving you two uh, there, we're, we're you're waffling, you're okay. refusing to answer, refusing to commit. And some of them actually are... Okay. productive to, to what you're saying you want to okay. achieve.